job security. Before this, I worked at Google and at Siemens. I came here to do my PhD from Georgia Tech, and a large part of the core technology behind print drop security is based off my PhD research. So we have a very strong team. Uh, Lamar was engineer, he's our engineer for his last two companies. Uh, Dr. Trainer and Dr. Ahmad are both professors at Tech that are involved uh, with pin drop. On the sales and marketing side, uh, Matt Anthony leads marketing. He comes to us from after six years at Dell Securework, and Johnny comes to us after seven years at Cisco. Pinchoff has received a, a number of accolades. Uh, Gardner has called us a cool vendor for 2012. Uh, RSA Conference has called us one of the top 10 innovative companies uh, in InfoSec in the country. Uh, we're invited to media and to speak around the country. Uh, for example, we're going to plan this evening to go to DC to speak at a Federal Trade Commission Summit tomorrow on bone fraud. And so we were here last year as we were raising the seed round. Uh, we were fortunate to have a, a number of you uh, participate. Like, like Sigma and GRA and, and New World. Uh, we also had Andreessen Harvest participate as their first time investing in Southeast. And so we're here today as we're preparing for the next phase of the company. And so as a reminder of what we do, the way that I think about it, there's, there's three ways to, to break into a company. There's three ways to cause harm. One is the good old fashioned way. You walk in with guns and you try to walk out with bags of money. Right, the problem is there's lots of things to keep you from doing that. Yeah? The, the second way, is to try to break into a company's website, their firewall, their database. But first of all, it's hard. And, and, and secondly, there's lots of companies that build products to keep you from doing that. Right. The third way to, to break into a company is to just use the phone. If you think, for example, at banks, everything that you can do in a branch or online, you can do by phone. And if you're an attacker, the good news for you is the only thing standing between you and, as the attacker and the money is a call center agent. So as long as you can answer a few basic questions like what's your favorite color, what's your mother's big name, and your, your, your high school mascot, you can get away with the money. So that has become the weakest link. And so attackers have realized this, and they've escalated their efforts to go after this. And by using either things as simple as an app on your phone, or a dedicated process of having dedicated call centers, uh, they're causing a lot of harm. If you look at the numbers around this problem, uh, consumers are losing. Right? Phone fraud is the fastest growing form of fraud. Faster than online, faster than in person. One in every three cases of identity theft that happens in the country starts off with a phone call. Right? Uh, the banks are losing. 30% of the fraud that happens at bank is cross channel. Right? And what the, the world has done to deal with this is when you call into anyone, they ask you all of these basic questions. What's your favorite color? What's your eyes to the mask? How they waste your time? And they also waste their time. They waste their time to such a degree, they're wasting $10 billion a year just in the US asking you your favorite color. And if you add up these numbers, it's created a very interesting market for us. A market around anti-fraud for financials, around dedication for enterprises, uh, around defense and intelligence. And as soon as the, the government found out that we had technology that can listen to a phone call and tell you where the device is or her, they thought of some interesting use cases. Right? There's also markets around individuals and telcos and identity providers. That adds up to $3.2 billion addressable market for pin drop. And we just don't walk you through the product and technology that we build to go after that market. So as Paul mentioned, uh, the basic line of difference that a lot of banks have is asking you the knowledge-based authentication questions. What's your mother's maiden name? What's your social security number? We've had fraudsters call into bank, change their name midway through the conversation, and still steal money. So that's how poor that system is, right? As a result of this, what we do to address this problem is add multiple layers of defense to that single layer. What we do is through our acoustic fingerprinting technology are able to identify any phone device in the world, identify what type of phone is making that call, and where in the world is that phone device making that call from. Using this, we can say if a call coming in is actually coming from a landline in Atlanta or actually coming from a Skype phone in Nigeria. And this allows us to detect anomalies within each call. In addition, we have the world's largest database of well-known fraudsters, and we use this to identify when any of these fraudsters call at our center. Right? The ability to do this is based on my PhD research, where we show that every single phone call has a very unique fingerprint embedded within the audio of the call. And this fingerprint consists of over 147 different features, which allows us to identify the type of device, the geography, and finally, the actual device itself. Right. With this core technology, we've built 
multiple products, and we have three products in the market right now. The first, our flagship product, is the phone fraud detection system, which sits as an appliance on the call center and tells them whenever a call coming in is fraudulent. In addition, we have a phone notification service, which just looks at a phone number and identifies if that phone number is highly likely to be fraud. As, uh, in addition, what we're doing uh, as part of our roadmap is building out identity verification solutions where you can use your phone as an authentication token. And as consumers, you'd be able to know when a call coming in is actually Bank of America coming. <laughs> so this is our product. What we're showing here is a map of all the phone fraudsters all over the world. Uh, all over the US in the last one month. And they are coming from very, very concentrated areas. For example, in this particular case, they're coming from Tillamook <laughs> County, which has absolutely no people. It's only known for its trees and its cheese. Right? <laughs> and yet, there are a lot of processes calling from places like that. In addition, our intelligence allows us to identify individual phone numbers, give it a risk score. And not only is this risk score high because of uh, you know, the number of uh, fraud volume, it's also related to all these other fraud callers, all <laughs> using a variety of different numbers, just by that simple phone trick open. And what this helps us do is not only identify that particular phone number, but all its other brothers and sisters. Right? Um, right now we're deployed in multiple places. Uh, some of our prime deployments are we are protecting, uh, we are deployed at the US government where we have, we're protecting, we're identifying uh, active phone calls where there are threatening, uh, suspicious callers at the other end. In addition, we deployed at a top five bank <coughs> where we're protecting them with $20 million worth of fraud loss. We're stopping that much of fraud loss. As a result of that, what the bank said is that we are the biggest quantum leap in fraud fighting in the last 20 years. So we've been dropped security, and we bring trust back to the telephone channel. So we're prepared for a series A? Yeah. 